it's amazing to start off the podcast uh, with our first guest uh, here uh, this afternoon. Um, it's it's my pleasure, you know, to be able to host this podcast here at the Collective, um, and I think we've we've really been excited about actually doing uh, a podcast for some time now, and I think it's great that we've been able to kick off the the series really with the legendary John Bell, sort Thank of. You. <laughs> In the in the hot seat, um, but yeah, I think the 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 whole vision of the podcast is to explore the stories um, of people that have uh, sort of intersected our space and have come in and started to get involved and to really give people an insight sort of into their stories. Um, and so, what we're going to be doing through the series um, for those that are listening is that we're going to just be really delving into um, the, the individual, but also looking forward to kind of those, the, the people that are um, helping shape the future of Scunthorpe um, in, in both small ways and big ways. Um, but I think we, we really recognize that it's important to tell the story. Um, and so, as a yeah, John, thanks so much for taking the time, you know, to be with us. Yeah, it's, no worries. yeah, it's, uh, I feel like the first time we had a, the, the, the most awkward of interviews was when we had to do a panel for a university uh sort of where i, I roped john into it and uh, and you were like what am i doing here again and like yeah. it was all on zoom yeah, it was during the during the covid times yeah yeah, yeah. Um, i had absolutely terrible internet at home and i remember uh, a specific moment where it came to my point to speak yeah. and my internet cut out at that exact moment oh, and then man. came back just yeah. as everyone was waiting for me to talk. Yeah, it was amazing. It, it was pure. It was pure. Uh, a sort of a TV moment. I think. Um, but I think, yeah. It, it, in some ways, you know, those kind of opportunities to explore sort of some of your journey. I think you were just beginning your journey as a as a photographer at that point in terms of as a professional, you know, freelancer. Um, but yeah, I think really for those that don't know you, I thought it would be a good opportunity to just reflect and kind of look at your journey you know as uh, somebody that um, has started something sort of from scratch um, mm -hmm. just kind of hearing a bit of your own journey here um, and and kind of what's led you up into this point so you can go as far back as possible if you want to go straight to the the you know um, labor ward if you wanted to uh, in terms of how it all began but once um, upon a time so, yeah, yeah, yeah this is what happened um but but yeah just to give us a bit of a long form just idea of like what you know what yeah, yeah. what your life was like growing up um, and go what 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 got you to the point and I'll probably jump in here right. and there yeah um so for those that don't know uh, I'm John Bell I do photography and uh, and videography um kind of first started and sort of got into photography um, from like reading like music magazines and stuff. Um, I used to have like this big, big wall at home that was just absolutely filled with like band, you know, like the, you can pull out the posters. Uh, yeah. I just used to have all this photography on the wall and I just used to like look at it and think, oh, that's so cool. That would mm. be such a wicked job. Just yeah. like going around and photographing these bands and getting to meet, meet all these people and yeah. stuff. And I just thought, oh, that'd be awesome. Um, so like going to going to kind of college, I wasn't really sort of sure what what I really wanted to do. So mm -hmm. I kind of picked a bunch of random subjects and kind of <laughs> As you do. was was hoping for the best. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, sort of initially, I was doing uh, so I picked four subjects because the minimum you could kind of do was three. Mm -hmm. So I was like, if I pick four, then at least you know I can drop one if I don't like it. Yeah. So, um, I was doing history, uh, music tech, uh, media. Um, and what else was I doing? Oh, and business. <laughs> that one. Is that, yeah, is that far back? <laughs> um, did rubbish in business, funnily enough. Yeah. Uh, rubbish in music tech. Uh, did good in the media, uh, and dropped history because I found it to be a bit boring. Um, and then yeah, sort of pivoted and thought um, maybe I'll kind of go into like music journalism, mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah. Um. So I then sort of steered all my courses more towards that, yeah, uh, and kind of did like English, um, English language, mm -hmm. um, to kind of go into like the writing yeah, sort yeah. of side. And I thought, oh, well, if I'm doing media, then I might as well do photography. Yeah, and then uh, later on, I had to pick up another subject. So I did film oh, as well. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
So that was kind of what sort of steered me on that path, and then mm. have, having doing the doing the sort of photography, um, did like one year of it, and then was like, oh yeah, this is this is the one. This is it. This is the one that's <laughs> yeah. gonna gonna stick, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so then, yeah, went to went to uni. Was still doing the kind of gig photography yeah, yeah. at that time as well. So I was doing my obviously my my course at college, and mm. then uh, on my like, evenings and and weekends and stuff, I would just be going to gigs, photographing them. Wow. Uh, a lot of just stuff for free. Mm. Um, a lot of kind of contributing to like music magazines. Um, I was just happy to be doing it and then seeing your photo like in print. Yeah. It's like, okay, that's yeah. that's exactly what I've been working Brilliant. working towards. Yeah. Um, so that was that was really cool. Um, and kind of did went to went to uni obviously. Um, kind of because I I went to uni in Leeds. Mm-hmm. Um, it was the arts uni that I went to, so it was a yeah. lot more kind of art focused. Mm-hmm. Um, and I found that that kind of scrutiny. Of everything being overanalyzed, yeah, like yeah. a photo isn't just a photo anymore. It's yeah. all this sort of deep, deep <laughs> meaning behind it, and it kind of, kind of made me fall out of love with photography a little mm-hmm. bit. Um, so I kind of did did my course, you know, kind of wanted to drop out throughout, but stayed stayed on course, finished it through to the end, wow. um, and then came back to Scunthorpe and was sort of like. Damn, I don't, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, so this was 2019? Yeah, you only yeah, came about, about, about that sort of time. Yeah. Um, so I I initially kind of vowed to like, I was like, oh, I'm so fed up with photography, I'm, yeah. I'm never going to pick up a camera again, yeah, and yeah, yeah. all this sort of stuff. Um, but I had, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I had like all these skills Yeah. yeah. Um, that sort of picked up along the way. Um, and it kind of seemed like a waste to, to not do anything with mm. it. So... Um, and if I could make money from it, then why not? Why not? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I kind of got in with like a wedding photographer. Yeah. Uh, as his like second shooter, uh-huh. did maybe about twenty weddings with him. Okay. Um, was still working at Wilco at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just trying to like balance balance both. Yeah. Um, and then a friend sort of randomly reached out to me. Yeah. Um, was like, oh, there's um, the does this this job come up at um. At the place that I work, it's like yeah. a, a fashion brand, like a vintage yeah. Yeah, vintage yeah. clothing sort of place. Uh, they need someone who can take photos and who's who's good at Photoshop yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, would you be interested? So I was like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so worked there for like a year and a half, kind of during mm-hmm. COVID sort of time, um, and then like lost my job like really suddenly there. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and then again, I was in that point like, oh. Yeah. What the flipping heck am I going to do now? Yeah, yeah. I'd been trying to do the the freelance stuff on the side of working full time, so I was doing full time Monday to Friday, and then weekends like any odd jobs that I could pick up. Mm. But I found um, there was it was really hard to get into it and plunge into going full time. Yeah. Freelance or um, that that sort of thing. Um, so I felt like I I didn't really know anyone. Yeah. So like at uni, my friend, like uh, everyone who I was sort of friends with, all kind of did photography and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and there was this one guy who he would he would do these these crazy shoots with big brands like Harley Davidson. Oh my and goodness! All these massive car brands, and I'd always be like, "How the heck did you yeah. get yeah. that job?" Yeah. Like, I mean, every time he'd be like, oh, it's, "It's someone that my dad knows, or it's someone uh, that yeah, yeah. such and such knows." Jeez. So it's kind of like cemented in that yeah, yeah. you definitely have to know yeah. people to kind of like yeah, yeah. properly make it. Yeah. Um, and it's all, it's all about those connections and that's how you get these kind of jobs yeah. in photography and stuff. Just sort of led me, you know, I was kind of at that point of I don't know what to do. Yeah. Um, so that's when I started sort of coming here and mm. obviously doing those uh, horrible Zoom calls. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, started, just decided, right, I'm going to, I'm going to, Go all in mm. at this. Give it a sort of two month mark. Wow. If nothing happens after that two months, yeah. I'm not making any money from it. Then I'll just kind of hang in, hang in the towel <laughs> and, and give up, sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but luckily, I'm still here. Wow. Uh, is it nearly? It'll be two years in April, I think. Jeez, that's crazy. So yeah, no, it's wow. flown by, isn't it? <laughs> that's crazy. So from two months to two years, I mean, 
that 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 I mean, in terms of that that journey of you know kind of actually saying this is something that actually I want to continue to pursue. Like, what were the the main things that that kept you going? You know, for you in terms of uh, you know running your own thing, really. I think it it was it was knowing that this is what I wanted to do, and knowing that all this time that had been invested yeah. into it, this is what it was supposed to lead lead up to yeah yeah. You know, all the time at college all the time at uni yeah all the time you know busting yeah busting my guts you yeah know, trying to uh do a full-time job and doing the yeah, stuff yeah. on the side yeah it was like if i don't seize this moment and yeah. utilize it and it was uh, it was all also like kind of the perfect coincidence as well because mm. we were kind of just coming out of of covid as yeah. well yeah um obviously during that time of covid I was, well, I mainly sort of wanted to do the music photography. Yeah, yeah. And with COVID and all the gigs. So yeah. I was stopping that kind of, put that to just, the side sort yeah. of thing. So kind of, when I launched was when we were coming out. Businesses yeah. were opening up again. Um, everybody was looking for that advertising bump. Yeah. Uh, to kind of get them get them started again for yeah. the, uh, places opening up. So it was kind of the perfect opportunity. Like the jobs were yeah. there. Yeah. And then... Um, yeah, it was just the the ideal situation, really. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, in terms of the actual um, process of of you know, you built, you know, you spoke about those networks and kind of getting those networks. Like, what what you know, sort of as you stand right now, do you feel mm-hmm. like you've built yourself a network that you sort of are quite comfortable in at the moment, or do you still feel like? Obviously, there's always more networking yeah, to be done, but yeah. I think I, I remember us having a few conversations about this, the way in which networking has become quite stagnant you yeah, know, in, in some spaces. You I know. think it's, it's it's all about being you know, a, a genuine sort of person at the yeah. end of the day. A lot of these networking events, they're quite rigid. Yeah. You see a lot of the same faces there, yeah. a lot of the same types of business. Businesses, yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know... They're sort of not not necessarily the the ideal places. Somewhere yeah. like this, where businesses are, are already here, whether they've mm. got a pod or um, they're kind of just co working, mm. or they're coming through into the coffee shop. You're always kind of meeting people. There's a certain buzz yeah. around around being here. Yeah. Um, and then with that, you know, if I think if if your work's good, um, then you'll you'll stand out. Yeah. Through the crowd. Through the crowd. Yeah. 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 Um, so you know, a lot of a lot of the networking has kind of just happened naturally. You know, I'll do a job for one person, they'll go, "Oh wow, you did a really good job at that." Yeah. yeah. Could you do this one for me? Yeah. yeah. Or oh, my friend needs something, or this person needs something. It kind of just spreads. Yeah. Just yeah. Through through word of mouth. Yeah, yeah. So I found word of mouth to be to be the best sort of yeah networking thing for me, really. Absolutely. Mm. As I guess, as you look at um, your your sort of journey thus far, and then I guess. Looking to the future, because I think, you know, we've spoken about quite a few different projects that you've got in mind and things like that. Like what, you know, I guess broadly speaking, what is your hope for Scunthorpe in mm-hmm. terms of as a place that, you know, people like yourself, you know, going into the future can actually start, you know, your your kind of career, your your kind of uh, kind of your um, kind of startup. And, and, and obviously tying into that sort of some of the stuff that you sort of are wanting to do. Like, can you talk us through some of that? I think... <clears throat> Excuse me. I would like to see. Oh, rather, I'm. I've got quite. Ironically, I've got quite into sort of teaching. Yeah. Um. So I personally would love to do a lot more teaching things. Yeah. You know, kind of building up a bit more of a link with with the colleges, mm-hmm. um, universities, and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. I've done little bits of teaching sessions, kind of here um, and at some other places. So yeah. kind of building that up um, would be good in terms of like the future of Scunthorpe. Um, I think yeah, bringing bring like what we said about the networking, bringing that natural mm. networking yeah, yeah. sort of back, um, and sort of building. I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, I think I think building, like you're saying, is there, there's something about this ecosystem that's lacking. You know, mm. in some respects, where you know you've got this emerging group of, of young people and, and sort of you guys that are starting different projects and there's no real yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what I was yeah, going to say yeah, no, you I was going to say about supporting 
supporting other other people that are doing the same thing as well. Mm. So like when I started, uh, a lot of other photographers sort of would kind of see me as a bit of a threat. Or mm-hmm. That's kind of the impression that that I sort of got. Yeah. Um, and even even just other businesses um, as well would always see other businesses that were doing the same thing as a threat. Yeah. yeah. There was no sort of community of thinking that, um, oh, well, we could do something together or yeah. oh, this could be beneficial for, for both of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So by having that mindset, I've always, that's how I've sort of approached yeah. my business and what I do. And that's led to, obviously, more work. So yeah. I've got, like, good connections with uh, a couple of different video production companies. Mm. Um, they will sort of pass work on to me yeah. uh, if needed or I'll do, like, sort of, second shooter stuff with yeah. them um, and obviously by not seeing them as a th- I, I could have easily seen them as a threat and yeah. gone oh I'm not working with them they're, yeah, yeah. they're doing the same as what I am yeah, yeah, yeah. but obviously if you have that you know that empathy and mm. realise that it can be a, a yeah. sort of symbiotic relationship yeah. Yeah, then, yeah, yeah. Um, there's no need to to see things in that way if your work's good then it'll, yeah. it'll speak for itself yeah well I mean I think you, you look at all the the different kind of quarters that you're seeing in a lot of the major cities you know it is about the same shops being in in quarters you, know, you look at the jewelry quarter you look mm-hmm. at all these different but, but actually in collaboration and as you start to you know play to your strengths as photographers you know you're able to really you know push work towards people you know yeah, because yeah. if you're all doing that you know and it's not just a case of every man for themselves mm-hmm. sort of type approach you know like i think i think that's the beauty in terms of and i've, and I've seen that in your own work you know yeah. like i think and even guys that have come here uh, looking around the space you know like you could have easily been very territorial but i think in everything the the, the one thing that's kind of been a real marker in in my mind is just that generosity of spirit you know it's really been a case of going hey come you know see what i'm doing you know come see and it's just that open that kind of open door really you know that i think people just need you know especially as they start they're starting out you know where they've had so many kind of doors kind of shut in their faces you know to kind of actually be met with the sense of going actually we you know we get what you're doing and we get what yeah. you want to do and i think i think that you know that's a kind of a completely opposite spirit to what they're getting yeah you know? yeah I, I absolutely love you know like i said doing doing the bits of teaching and um in terms of like you know bring it back to sort of the, the future of scunthorpe and, mm. and stuff like that, i would i would love maybe not you know right now but in the future of sort of my business yeah. sort of starting something that's um, more like a kind of agency so yeah. um, it can kind of bring people along at the start of, of their journey with mm. you know never picked up a camera before yeah, yeah. through to you know being able to work in that wow. industry and yeah. sort of you know teaching them all, all the things that they need to yeah. go from A to B yeah because yeah, yeah. it's you know it's it's the thing that I that I was lacking yeah. When when I started, I didn't have anybody to kind of go, oh, this is um, this is what you need to be doing. This is yeah. um, how you can do X, Y, and Z. Yeah, yeah. Uni kind of just taught me, you know, the basics and sort of how to take a photo. But the actual business side, which is the arguably the most important part, yeah, yeah, yeah. was kind of lacking. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, w- I would love to be able to start something that brings people along for for the the whole journey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and doesn't you know. Um, doesn't kind of take advantage of of the people that are starting out and don't mm. don't know any better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I think this is the key thing. I think it is like what, in what way have we, um, you know, just like you say, just become complacent. You know, where where guys are being taken advantage of, and you you're not putting in place um, a pathway sort of for them to really understand and 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 really get to grips with what it actually takes to do it early on. You know, because I think. Mm. The one thing I was at a um, at a sort of uh, workshop slash sort of lecture uh, sort of a few weeks back, and they were just talking. One of the examples was you know kids being pushed down things like anim- animal management sort of courses right. in college, and uh, they were talking. Well, there's no zoos in the local area. Mm-hmm. There's no way that all these people that are doing animal management are going to get any jobs. Yeah. 
and and I think this is the, the part of the way in which the kind of education system is broken is because people are being pushed down all these different pathways where they actually well, aren't jobs. Yeah, you know, and yeah. I know yes, within the sector that you're in, you know, a lot of it is creating opportunity yourself. You know, it's not established yeah. sectors. Uh, you know, as in with stuff like animal care and stuff like that. But it mm-hmm. it still goes to show, like actually, are we doing people a disservice especially within the colleges where people are studying things with the thinking that they're going to be able to get the job in that sector yeah. when they actually don't know what it's going to take whereas if there's something that you're talking about that really comes alongside and actually aids the colleges in mm. actually making sure that they're giving the the young people the best chance you it's know giving them a route yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 at the end of at the end of the day that's that's yeah. sort of what yeah yeah, because I mean, the last thing you want is people getting a, a sort of a qualification and then just sitting on it. Because that's the other yeah. thing that um, that came out. Even this is back in in the pandemic, you know, where the the the, the percentage of people that were literally getting degrees mm-hmm. and I think they were called the silent student or the silent scholar, you yeah. know, where they're literally get a degree and just not do anything with it. Yeah, you know? and I so, could I could probably count on one hand. The, so at my uni, there was about. 60 people yeah. in the course in total yeah Could probably count on one hand the amount of people that are actually doing wow. photography now jeez wow so obviously it shows you know it yeah. is a competitive thing yeah yeah, um, yeah and you know not everybody's got the the dedication to kind of yeah go go through and but i mean that uh, but like you said the drop-off rate you know that that's almost in terms of like a number like you're saying almost less than 10 percent mm. are going through to actually work in the industry that, that that's something more of actually you know a question mark around tertiary education in general yeah. and i know that you have been quite critical of you know actually yeah you know, i mean if I've, I've said you know from from the start that if somewhere like this existed when i was at that pivotal moment of deciding whether i was going to pay nine and a half grand mm. for you know i think it's nine thousand two hundred and fifty now yeah yeah, yeah. um whether I was going to, you know, go to uni or whether I was going to go freelance, um, I would have taken taken this option yeah. hands, hands down. Yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah. Um, and I, I, I would, I would love to see this place be able to um, sort of rival mm. rival unis for creative things because yeah, yeah. obviously uni. Don't get me wrong, uni still has its place. I'm yeah, gonna devalue that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think for creative subjects, the best way to learn is just by doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you need to be in the field. You need to be working with with these different companies. Yeah. Because um, it's it's the only way that you that you'll learn. And yeah. Develop. yeah. But I guess at this point, um, I think it's important to sort of reach out to those that might be listening that are coming from institutions. You know, that might be, you know, really interested in this idea of actually how can what you're talking about work alongside kind of current curriculums, you know, mm. and current uh, sort of ways of working, you know, in colleges and universities and stuff like that. So I think, I think that I think that's a really key sort of key point, really. Yeah, I think we've we've seen it with with colleges where they're sort of just starting to think about um, running things alongside mm. um, alongside the actual curriculum in, t- yeah. in terms of like work experience and, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Because um, obviously, you know, a lot of the work experience stuff, you, you can't always guarantee that there's going to be the work afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it would be interesting to see the stats on mm. um, how many people actually get taken on. Yeah, yeah. Afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think this is the whole thing. I think, especially if you look at the Kickstarter program, you know, that a lot of money was was thrown into that. Um, you know, and actually, of of those placements, how many actually were funded? Obviously, then actually actually stayed in and and were jobs. Um, you know, ultimately longer term. You know, I think I think this is the the, the issue where, uh, for many colleges and 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 universities, for that matter, that are. Um, in the position where they're trying to get placements uh, sort of in the industry, you know, actually because they don't have the the conversations going uh, all the time, you know, mm-hmm. they just reach out when they need something. And I think that's the thing that, that frustrates me a lot of the time is often we get approached, you know, when it's the right time, you know, and I think this is, yeah. you know, this is a bugbear. And, and I understand that in, in many of these sort of educational institutions, it's, it's, it's very, much a case of you know time and you know energy to to maintain all of these relationships but i think if if 
uh, for me the the real question is this whole idea of space you know mm -hmm. actually are we living in each other's spaces you know and are we not just inviting people to do like these token sort of um lectures or whatever at times when you need you know people when actually yeah. is it about living in each other's spaces coming in you know doing you know we've just had some guys from the university coming and doing like a study session in the evening you yeah. know and we're happy to facilitate that um but again you know i don't think the university sees mm -hmm. a lot of that you know it's, it's oh, actually students yeah. that are are building those bridges themselves and maybe that's the better way you know maybe it is about students taking into their own hands and, and making those connections rather than letting the institutions yeah, yeah yeah i mean you don't want to get to a point where uh you know if if the uni then turned around and I was like, hey, this yeah. place is open yeah. um, on an evening. <laughs> yeah. And you suddenly get flooded yeah, with, yeah. Uh, with all these things. So yeah. maybe that, yeah, maybe yeah. that is, is the better way of doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, I think ultimately it's, I think it's, it's, it's just thinking sort of strategically, you know, as we kind of move into the future, as we move into these opportunities for, um, education providers you know to think longer term and not be so short-sighted you know mm. if, if i had to be so blunt you yeah. know is is, yeah, is yeah. to kind of go actually it's not about bums on seats in terms of you know you know year in and year out it's actually going do you want the best outcome you know for the students that are, are that's there? what yeah. that's what it should be yeah all about you know yeah yeah you know that's that's what it, it should be about at the end of the day is, is making sure that mm. um Whatever it is that they want to do, mm. they get given the most amount of resources and mo they're aware of all the options before yeah. they deep dive and go into a route that's potentially not, not what they thought yeah. that it would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's making sure that everybody knows yeah. all the information, really. Yeah, yeah. I, and I think that for me is, is just the, yeah, the, the, the point, I guess, for us is to kind of go, how do we, you know, how do we make sure that... Um, we are telling the stories like your story mm. and and that's getting back into the the universities and i know that we've had some really good initial conversations with john leggett college and and we're really hoping that that's gonna you know really develop into something you know that we're going to be able to sort of um see and uh, become yeah. fruitful you know for those students and things like that but i think i guess it's it's too almost for you know other institutions like John Leggett you know to sort of take the take the lead you mm. know because I think it's difficult for us because sort of we're just getting on with the humdrum of day-to-day -day business yeah, yeah. you know yeah, um, yeah. and so it's, it's difficult you know to be reaching out to some of those sometimes it's better for us to, and, and and I think really a real um, I'd, I'd say a compliment to John Leggett they reached out to us and they kind of pursued us which is I think where, where it needs to be you know yeah. um i think we, we we don't have time you know to waste yeah sending i'm sure they're probably in the yeah. in a similar situation but, yeah yeah, uh, yeah yeah but yeah it's, it's good that they, they yeah they reached out the way the yeah way yeah they did yeah so i guess i guess moving forward and you know kind of you know maybe thinking about like somebody that is um at at, at that kind of crossroads that is is wanting to kind of have a uh, you know, go into photography or going into, you know, digital or, or whatever yeah, yeah. presents, like, what would you be saying to them, you know, listening to this podcast? Like, uh, what, what can they do? You know, yeah, just give us some, give us some, some top tips, I'd say, you know, from your journey, I guess. Um, I think definitely, you know, try your best to master your craft mm. and, and learn the most that you can by yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the internet is, uh, as much as there is a lot of rubbish on there, um, there is also a lot of good and yeah. you know, a lot of the stuff that I learned, especially with video, um, as the majority of it come from just going, oh, I'd like to do that. How yeah. do I do that? Yeah. YouTube. Yeah. Um, looking up this effect, looking up that effect. How do I do this? How do I do that? How, yeah. do, how do I work a microphone? How do I work yeah. a gimbals you know what i mean yeah um so yeah learn as much as you can um reach out to people as well mm. the best way that you can learn is by learning from others yeah, yeah um you'll pick up you know different ways that different people do things um and then you'll you'll maybe find what you want to sort of specialize in yeah in more i know from me working with um different sort of video production companies mm. Uh, they kind of do a, a lot more interviews. Yeah. Um, a setup like we've got today. Yeah. Uh, 
when I started out, I probably wouldn't have done something this sort of yeah, yeah. complicated or, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, two cameras, a bunch of lights, yeah, microphones, yeah. all that. Yeah, um, yeah. But you kind of see the way that different people do it and go, oh, right, okay, that's how they did that. Yeah. I'll, I'll remember that for when I come to do Brilliant. my stuff. But, yeah. But yeah, speak to people. I'm sure that, uh, you know, 90% of people will, will be willing to sort of listen, mm. have a conversation. Um, and if, you know, if your work's good, you probably end up landing landing a job with, with yeah. some of these people. Yeah. A lot of these companies are, um, especially especially sort of video and, and photo places, um, they're always on the lookout for, yeah. for people to kind of come and do second shooting, come be an, an extra pair of hands yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, on shoot days because, you know, you can can never really have enough no. enough people really especially when it comes to bigger yeah, sort yeah. of productions and stuff yeah, yeah, so yeah just reach, reach out um, if anybody has any questions you can reach out uh, to me as well yeah. um, my website is www.johnbellphoto.com yeah. um, or you can message me on, on Instagram all yeah. the uh, emails and phone numbers and all that jive or uh, all, all there. on there, yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess the, the one thing that that, I, that just occurred to me as you were talking, I, I know sort of social media and stuff like that is this massive mm. <laughs> sort of thing, you know, especially when you're in an industry like, you know, a creative industry where there's so much pressure to do all of that stuff on yeah, top of actually yeah. running your own business. You know, like, have you got any advice for people that are, oh, you know, a lot of people set up, you know, especially when they're studying, they set up these kind of, these college or university accounts for their kind of portfolio, you know, is there, do you have any advice to them, you know, to actually, you know, start using some of the content they're creating sort of during their university and college actually to their benefit rather than it just yeah, being yeah. these kind of case study, you know, kind of things yeah, you yeah, just yeah. do for the sake of <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I would, I think, you know, I think the the best thing you can do is is yeah, um, film as much stuff as you can, take as many photos as you can behind the scenes stuff, um, anything that you can make into something else. I'm, yeah, I'm sure it'll it'll come back at a, a yeah. later date. Yeah, um, you know, I wish I'd uh, filmed some of the stuff that I was doing when I was sort of started out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I could kind of come back to it and maybe make something. Yeah, from it. Um, Definitely making making use of, of social media is, is definitely the way to go. Yeah. Um, you don't necessarily... A lot of people think, oh, well, you know, I'm not a professional, so I'm, I'm not going to make yeah. this account yet. I'm going to... Because I, I definitely did that. Yeah, I was yeah. sort of like, oh, well, I'm not, I'm not a professional, so I'm, I'm not going to... I'm going to wait to make an Instagram account. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to wait to make a website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you don't always have to position yourself as the professional. You can no. just be an enthusiast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can be, these are the photos that I've taken. Yeah, I'm yeah. just starting out. Um, and you can, you know, use that to get better. Use that to work with models that are yeah. in that similar position of just starting out. And yeah, that's yeah. how you build. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's really good. And I guess, I mean, for people that are um, listening and do you just want to get in touch with you, you know, and, and kind of want to, I know you mentioned your, your, your website, mm -hmm. um, but I guess, you know, to just give people an idea of kind of some of the projects, you know, that you are working on at the moment, how to kind of keep in the loop with regards to that. Is it, is it just following you on Instagram? Like I what, think what's that's the best? best yeah. yeah. Instagram's probably the one that I'm, I use the most. Yeah. Um, in terms of updating stories, keeping people in the loop of, uh, different, maybe, you know, sessions that I'm putting on, whether that be a day of, photos that I'm you know studio photos I'm doing or teaching sessions yeah. um, any of those kind of updates that would you know affect everybody yeah yeah uh, usually sort of on there yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the best best way to keep up to date with yeah sort of what I'm doing absolutely and I guess yeah and, and I guess for, for us uh, I think uh, I've said this to you many times but I think you know it's been great to have our first podcast sort of with you because i think you've been sort of a part of uh in many ways the genesis of the space because you know even before we opened <laughs> you were, you were, you're knocking down the door to yeah. get in here and i think your um ability to kind of network and bring people in and make people feel comfortable you know uh, in your your kind of just your generous spirit in 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 welcoming people in and and even people you know that you know like like you've said earlier that are from the same sector, you know, mm -hmm. and actually just going, hey, like, I don't see you as competition. I think that's really 
you know, you've allowed us sort of to continue to welcome people in, you know, and I think uh, it's, yeah, it's just been great to have this conversation and actually see how far you've come, you know, to think about it. it's been two, you know, two years, you know, yeah, next yeah, year, it's, it's just crazy. Um, yeah, it is. Um, but I, I think we just hope, you know, we're, our hope is that you're just the beginning, you know, mm. for, for other industries and other people sort of to come and actually just be part of a community, you know. I'd, that, I'd, yeah. I'd absolutely love that for, for, for Scunthorpe, you know, mm. to see, you know, a bunch of different people in different industries sat, yeah. sat in this seat yeah. and saying, you know, I started here, yeah. you know, two years ago and, and now I'm thriving and yeah. you know, doing well for myself, you know, I'd love yeah. for, to see that for for other people, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's a that's an amazing note to end on. And so, yeah, so... Yeah, please stay posted. Um, we're going to be putting out uh, one of these podcasts every month, um, sort of exploring some of the stories and, and really the real stories, because often mm. it, not every story is a success story. You know, everything can be learned from. So I think we, we're not going to um, mince words. And, you know, we want to bring you the real stories of things happening here at the collective, but also sort of in and around Scunthorpe. So please, um, you know, stay tuned, you know, um, find us wherever you find your podcasts. We are going to be there. Um, but yeah, thanks again, John, for being here. It's been a real no privilege. Worries. Yeah. Fair.